Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, do this when he's stressed out, how to melt his heart. Melt his heart, melt his heart. <laughs> All right, really quickly, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new content. And these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. Uh, this is a group where you can ask me questions directly on a regular basis and I shoot videos based on your questions just for you. So check out the link below in the description, my VIP group called Midlife Love Mastery. All right, let's talk about what to do when a man is stressed out. And I wanna share a story, um, something that happened to me some years ago. It was actually on a second date. It was on a second date. And we she wanted to go to Disneyland. Um, she was from out of town, so she had asked if we could go to Disneyland. I'm like, that sounds great, that'd be fun. Now, one thing you need to know about me is I am very, I'm hypersensitive in the particularly in the area of waiting. I have an issue about waiting. Um, not everybody is sensitive like this to me, but I am hypersensitive. I just, I'm, I'm a slightly impatient person. So let me tell you what happens. We get to Disneyland and when we get to the park, there's at least a 20 minute line just to park the car. And here I'm just, you're waiting, you're waiting, waiting. And I'm trying to suck it up, but inside I'm like already starting to get agitated. And then when we parked the car, we had to walk like a mile, what seemed like a mile to get to the tram. And it took 15 minutes just to get to the tram to then take us to the park, okay? So then that's another 20 minutes and 15 minutes. And then we get to the park and we walk this long distance to get to the ticket aisle. Oh my God, and it took like, it took 45 minutes to get a ticket. It was ridiculously insane. I was just so, and I was starting to bubble up on the inside. I was really getting stressed out. And now I'm gonna own, this is all my own shit. This is my, you know, not everybody operates this way. And I don't know what happened in my childhood that caused me to become this way. It just is. And she could see I was visibly, I'm mean, like the steam was curling up my, you know, the steam was percolating from the inside out. And and by the way, when what is Disneyland? Disneyland is a place where you get onto rides and you wait, first off, you have to wait in line to get a ride. So like, what's the worst place for me to be is a place like this. So she could see I was visibly getting anxious, upset, everything. And what she did when we entered the park blew me away. And that's what I wanna lean into today. Because rather than judge me, rather than see this as a red flag per se, and red flag actually just simply means ask questions. Let me reframe that. Rather than see that as a deal breaker, because some people could see that as like, hey, he's impatient, he's got issues, blah, 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 blah. And to some degree, it's true, I am impatient and I have issues. But what she did was she leaned into me, and I'll never forget, she put her hand on my arm as we were walking in the park. She said, Jonathan, all is good. We're gonna have a great time today. I don't want you to be stressed out. We're gonna have a lot of fun. She just, she just, just simply by putting her hand on my arm. Now, many of you know um, the, the book, The Five Love Languages. And one of the love languages is physical touch. So as she put her hand on my arm and then whispered in my ear, basically, it wasn't a whisper per se, but it was just gently saying in my ear, reaffirming everything, it actually brought my level of energy down because she didn't see me as a problem. She just noticed that I was feeling a little agitated. And what I appreciate about what she did is because she operated from a place of love. And this is what happens. This is why I'm such a big proponent of my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Because she operated from a place, by the way, there's a link below to my book. But she operated from a place of love. In fact, what does my mug say? Do all things from love. Do all things with love. Oh, by the way, do you recognize my t-shirt? It's from a Saturday morning cartoon. If anyone can guess which Saturday morning cartoon, please post a comment below. So what makes this unique, at least it felt unique to me, is she came from a place of compassion, care, and kindness 
from a place of understanding rather than judgment. And oftentimes we can lean into judgment. And by the way, we have very good reasons why to lean into um, judgments or perceptions about people because they often prove us to, to be a problematic person. Here's, the, here's an opportunity. And by the way, we ended, up, we ended up dating for a while. Unfortunately, and I made a big mistake. It was a long distance relationship. I'm so, you know, and it had some problems because of that. But, but this second date went great. And by the way, when we were in line for all those rides, it was a great opportunity to talk to one another. I actually found myself going, oh, I wanna be in longer lines and longer lines and longer lines because I was enjoying talking to her because she was kind, compassionate, loving, and caring. And it was just fun to be with her. This is why I highly recommend checking out the book, Making Love All the Time by Barbara DeAngelis. Making Love All the Time by Barbara DeAngelis. And why I want you to check out this book is it literally is a recipe or how to connect with a person's heart. So I think, I believe men and women both should be reading this. And if it's not the man reading this, ladies, I encourage you to read this book. Read this book. So you can lean into how we can connect with another human being's heart. Because that's what this is really all about. Listen, I know the dating process sucks. I know there's a lot of frustration. I know there's a lot of men who ghost disappear emotionally unavailable. And by the way, there's women who ghost disappear and who are emotionally unavailable. There are people that are thirsty for connection, thirsty for connection. And at the same time, they really have weak emotional skills to be in relationship. I get it. And if you're following me on my channel, you know I recommend a lot of different books, like my own book, to shore up the inside out. Because ultimately, what I appreciate most about her, she was in her total sovereignty and her confidence. And because she was in her sovereignty and her confidence, I don't know why I did that <laughs> across, she was in her sovereignty and her confidence, she could lean into what was happening for me. And because of that, she actually made a stressful situation for me a lot calmer, and I appreciate that. All right, I think you get the gist of where I'm going. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Once again, if you know where this, uh, the cartoon this is from, post a comment below. If you have a question, if you have a comment, post it below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone or a pet or a teddy bear or a pillow and give it or a teddy bear and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we can use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.